For the last four years, an old farmhouse in Norfolk has been home for the Shrub family, a commune of young people who live together, who try and survive on their own resources, and who quietly reject the values of the consumer society which surrounds them and to which they all once belonged. As a housewife, I was very conscious of the way each house in the row contained a woman and a washing machine and a fridge and an electric cooker and, you know, all the things that one needs, for, you know, one thinks one needs to run a house. Some people had two cars, televisions, radios, and this seems so wasteful to me. We've got one gramophone between us and one washing machine, one van, and this is enough, you know. We share, we share all our money. <laughs> What else do we share? We share a dog and a cat and <laughs> chickens and we share our house and our land. To live in this way demands work, hard physical work, of the kind that few of us now have to do. Yeah. I'll take it out and throw the hole in again in a minute. Oy. However good or bad they may be as craftsmen, the members of Shrub family obviously enjoy working together. Richard, who once worked as an engineering apprentice, explains why he finds this satisfying. Obviously, to a degree, you're working for yourself, you know, because you're part of the group. But, I mean, you're always conscious of, of what you're doing. All the work that you're doing is pleasing other people, you know, and it, it's just a different attitude to work. I mean, when, when you're working for a boss or something, um, you know, you, you, your heart's not in it as much as what it is here because this is something you really believe in. To some extent, there's a division of labour between men and women. Val's younger daughter does what Mummy does. It does tend to fall into the traditional roles, but much less so than a normal situation. Because, you know, I only cook a meal perhaps once every three or four days now. Everyone cooks, everyone washes up, and everyone does the washing. Everyone bakes bread occasionally. It's so much more fulfilling. You know, to bake your own bread may seem a chore to some people, but it's a beautiful thing to do. One great strength of Shrub family is the joy that comes from working together. Okay, shall, we all, shall we all get into moving it then? Yeah, right. Do you want to help us move it? Yeah. It's a bit, uh, take the top Obviously, not all the work they do is as much fun as towing an old governess cart around the country. To keep money coming in, all of them work from time to time on odd jobs for local farmers or tradesmen and share their income. But they're more concerned with the quality of their life than in maintaining a high standard of living. To them, it's more important to enjoy things as they happen. What's that for? One of the things that does matter to them is the decline of craftsmanship. I get increasingly more and more annoyed at, at finding things that with built-in obsolescence. You know. it's, it's like a disease. A hundred years ago when they built a farm wagon, they didn't build it to last the man they made it for his lifetime. They built it to last forever. You know, They built it with the idea that it's going to last as long as they can possibly make it last. And there's so much quality in that. You know, there's so much richness in things that are built with that in mind. You know, and, and with houses too, they were built like that. They were built to last forever, you know. They didn't, it didn't occur to them that they were going to fall apart in a year or two. You know, and I guess the argument against it is, um, you know, we've got to keep people in work. But, you know, I just don't think that's valid, you know. I mean, it, craftsmanship is a thing that, that's just dying out, you know. If we lose that, then, <laughs> you know, we've lost a lot. If you can get it that far in, take the 
way. I'll try and guide it out through this at least hole. We bought the governor's cart at a, uh, a farm sale near Wisbeach, and there weren't many horse things there, and so we picked it up at a good price. And what we're going to do is do it up and sell it, and we're using the money that we make from it to put up a workshop so that we can work on carts and wagons and things like that um, in a better way, you know, it's a bit hard. I mean, it's very hard working without a proper place to do it in. Yeah, yeah, we should make it good to Our sources of income vary considerably. Sometimes we're out doing casual work. We have done quite a lot of farm work in the harvest time. But we do odd jobs for people. Our costs are, are quite minimal. I mean, we can run the whole place counting sort of rates and fuel bills. The net sort of expenditure per week would be something like 30 pounds. Without any motor transport, they would naturally cut it down to 2025. Don't you ever claim social security? Don't you live off it? No, we don't live off it unless we really we feel we really have to. It's, we've reached a situation where we have to do it. But we, we, we would much rather steer clear of it as much as possible. Why? Well, I think it's basically because of the hassles and also, also because you get you get the man coming in his car and and peering through the window and actually and sort of asking too many silly questions, which, which, should, which, is just, which isn't just on. The Shrub family commune own their house and an acre or so of land in common. Because of the complexities of ownership, they've had to form themselves into a limited company, and all of them are directors as long as they choose to live there. Company director Val takes the children to feed the chickens. One of the things that the group talk about rather vaguely is living in harmony with nature. The chickens, of course, are free range. The children have the rewards of gentle husbandry. They give corn to the hens, and the hens give their eggs to them. Two. Three. Yeah. Milk comes from the two goats which usually graze the fields of a friendly neighbouring farmer. The cycle of life is very much in evidence. Nothing is wasted, not the surplus milk for the goats' kids, not even the kids' droppings. There's a compost, there's whatever, you know, we try to recycle everything from the goats, from the chickens, from our own waste. Most of that goes on the compost and the um, wood ash from the fire all gets put on it somewhere or other. So everything's really going around in a complete circle. Everybody around the table is very much aware that the food that they're about to eat comes from the earth, even though they have to depend on bulk buying for some of their largely vegetarian diet. They hold hands in silence before they eat. It means that, you know, before you get a meal together, you're very hassled, you're running around doing all sorts of things. And you can go into food and not sort of care where it's come from or anything like that. And buy holding hands together around the table. You, ca you calm right down. Oh, like Grace, I think that they used to in the old days. Say Grace, but we do it by just holding hands and we don't say anything. We just sort of think whatever we want to. Dinner time is one occasion when the whole family comes together. For most of the time they split up into little groups for work or play. But they're all very much aware of their dependence on one another and all of them feel that they learn something from it. I, I think you learn about yourself by, by the way people react to you. you know? You're surrounded by lots of people and all the time, it's like everyone's a mirror, you know, and you're seeing yourself in them. And this is how you find out about yourself. And when there's a lot of people around, then, then you, you're getting lots of reactions, you know, and you, you're finding out where you are, you know, and what, what you really think and what you believe. And so, as it, as it goes on, it gets clearer and clearer, you know, and, and you become more aware of yourself and aware of your impact on other people and, and aware of the sort of person you are. Whereas if you're by yourself and you don't have any sort of deep relationships with anyone, 
Well, then you tend to get isolated, you know, you, you, you get out on a limb. Do, do you have conflicts, you know, <coughs> and, and situations which become uncomfortable between you, which you have to sort out? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Mm. I mean, there's it's, it's, it's always ups and downs. It's, it's That's good. learning too, though, isn't it? Yeah. I think yeah. the important thing is that we base this family on love. Mm. You know? And that's that's what we said. And there were only two of us. <coughs> we said, well, let's live with people we love and not base it on anything else. Mm. Mm. And it's worked out really well. Yeah. Listen, that's all you need. Yeah. We're just like brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the sex doesn't seem to come into it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it's not loving in a sexual way, it's loving in a family way. You don't have to have anything to do with sex in a deep relationship. And if you happen to be a lover with somebody, then then that's maybe better. And every time I get a lift with a man, he asks me about this place, and he says, how many men are there, and how many women? And when he hears there are more men uneven, than, than women, he says, oh, doesn't that create problems? And that's like, that's why they're interested. They're just interested in the sex thing. And they don't want to know about anything else half the time. Val's children see their father quite frequently. Most of the other youngsters who come here are the children of single girls. In this situation, a mother obviously has a great deal to gain from living with other people. Christine. Well, if I was on my own, there would, wouldn't really be anyone else Rufus to play with. He wouldn't have brothers and sisters without me having more children. And I don't really want more children. At the moment, I don't think it's right, really. And <coughs> he's got... Lots of fathers and mothers here as well. I think it's a very, very secure situation actually for a child. It's much more secure than if he was just living with two parents in a on a housing estate. Because like if I'm ill, there's always someone else who can take over. You know. Mm. But if I get if I get upset, then there's always someone who isn't upset. Grandiose theories of childcare tend to go by the board. Mm. Theoretically, the children should spend much of their time with the men. In practice, they tend to stay close to their mothers, depend on their mothers, learn from their mothers. That's it, spread it all around. It works out that, that the mothers seem to do most of the work. You know, I often feel that, that guilty about not spending enough time with them. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I sometimes feel that perhaps, you know, I'm not doing as much as I should, you know, with them. And I, I don't know exactly why it is. I think a lot of it is because I'm doing things that I'm really interested in. And, and I'm most probably more interested in them than, than I am, um, in being with the children, although I find that when I'm with the children, you know, I, I really enjoy it. But it's, you know, it's a hard thing to break, this sort of role. The children do gain a great deal from contact with one another. Bath time saves on the hot water if all the kids go in together. It's also a lot more fun. But however much support they get from each other, they still turn to mother when they're in trouble. The children all sleep together in one communal bedroom. Their mothers sleep apart in their own rooms, with or without somebody else. But the children's lives are surprisingly conventional, and Val's two elder children, Sarah and Joe, go to the local primary school. Here they mingle freely with the other children, without any feeling of being set apart by their background. The headmaster takes a matter-of-fact view of the situation. Well, as far as we're concerned, they are perfectly normal children, and in no way different from any of the others. Uh, they are um, both friendly, loving, warm children, uh, Joe is a bit more extrovert than Sarah, but this has nothing at all to do with their, um, their home background. They're just normal um, reception class children and they behave no different than anybody else. 